Hello, guys. I'm very happy today to have uh, to make this interview uh, with uh, the founders of Heavy Finance. We have Darius and we have Limonas. Darius and Limonas, how are you? Good. Hi. Good morning. That's oh, the first. Excited yeah, to be here. Yeah, it's good morning on your side. It's a uh, good afternoon on my side. You know, I'm in Singapore. Okay. Guys, uh, we're going to talk for the first time on my channel. Actually, I made some video previously, but this is the first time I make an interview of founder for agricultural crowdfunding. So can you explain a little bit uh, what is uh, agricultural crowdfunding? Because the viewers may not uh, know that. They are very, very familiar with real estate crowdfunding, but agricultural crowdfunding, not really. So explain us a little bit what it is. So... Hi, Mark, again, thanks for having us on your podcast. And uh, we're super happy to share, you know, information about, um, as, you, as you said, people are aware about the crowdfunding in a real estate or consumer loans, but never experienced the farming business on, on these type of platforms. So um, even, you know, it's very counterintuitive, but uh, European farmers lack of financing, even if the 40% of the European budget goes uh, is is uh, transferred to farmers each year um there's uh, the small and medium farms are are, are lacking behind and uh, they are not financed well so as a heavy finance as a company we we are dedicated to create a borderless lending marketplace for all european farmers that they can access finance first of all we are in a business in increasing the access to finance and only then it's a price so and that's what we do. We currently operate in uh, <clears throat> already five countries. So it's Lithuania, Latvia, Poland, Portugal, and Bulgaria. And uh, these are the markets we operate. These are the markets where uh, uh, farmers have most problems with the, uh, accessing the finance due to the various reasons, for starting from uh, uh, lack of um, competition between the banking sector, uh, then uh, efficiency in the farming itself, and uh, many other factors why the farmers really need some access. So that's what we do. That's where we focus on. And that's our business. By getting into the market, we uh, give the opportunity for investors to invest in one of the least risky sectors in, in, in the world, actually. Because, you know, whatever happens, farmers still want, uh, st not, not farmers, but uh, the ecosystem, the uh, all environment still needs food, right? So whatever happens, whatever crisis happens, we still need food and farmers are the ones who deliver that. So uh, we are dedicated to help them because they help us on a daily basis. That's, that, that's, that's pretty great, you know. Uh, from investor perspective, uh, we were, um, I was very attracted by the, by the high yield, you know, like for example, those, I'm on your platform right now. So, and and the, 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 the yield are just very high, like 12%, 12.9, 12. I mean, in, in, in average, it, it looks even like 14% is really, really huge. So if the investor wants to, uh, wants to invest in those projects, actually, so they, they lend the money directly to the, to the farmer through your platform. So they just click on one of the projects. For example, I click on that one. I just show you, uh, show, show an example. And then the 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 amount to uh, the amount to to uh, to lend, I think it's like uh, it, it's much much smaller than for real estate. So for example, this one is just sixty sixty thousand, and uh, the, the 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 yearly return rate is twelve percent, and uh, the loan period also is quite uh, it, it's more important than for real estate. Real estate usually we have like a one year here. I see like 30, uh, thirty six months, forty eight months. So it's quite a, it's quite a lot, and you have, we have like collateral. So if the, the the investor wants to invest, so basically they have to subscribe to the platform. I will put a link in the description uh, with a bonus, and they can lend with a minimum of uh, how much is the minimum to invest on the platform? One hundred euros, something like that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And and as you said, this is the 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 risk is quite low because uh, I mean this is very defensive. Uh, uh, and agri agricultural project. I mean, we are talking about sometimes I've seen like, I've invested already in one project. I think it was wheat or like, it's like very like basic, uh, uh, basic thing that we need for food. So, so, and it's pledged by collateral. So from your point of view, I mean, uh, of course it's not, uh, it, it can be complementary to real estate investments. I mean, if you, if you compare both, well, how, how would you, how, how would you compare both? 
Yeah, people tend to ask that question, but we're really not in the business to compete with the crowdfunding platforms, right? So, so we open the new asset class for the investors, and we expect that the ones who, um, first of all, is willing to help the farmers to do to to increase efficiency in their farms, uh, come to our platform and start investing. But uh, the ones who are here to invest and earn money. Um, they have to understand that they're in a very different uh, ecosystem that's not you know, anyhow related to real estate and, and different rules apply here. So first of all, you are lending to already existing business. So the farm was there for years. Uh, it is a land which is, you know, never disappears. Uh, and, and, and we have limited resources of land, so you cannot build more land and so on. So it's very different than crowdfunding, uh, than real estate. And, and um, that's what we as a heavy finance do. We try to understand the business itself. Mm-hmm. And then we uh, score the risk of the farmer. First of all, we um, try to understand what's the financial situation in the farm. What are they growing? What's the vi- uh, viability of the farm itself? <clears throat> and only then we speak about the pledge, the assets which the farmers pledge. So to give understanding for investors, they, they want to see that, you know, there's a tractor which costs 100,000 euros. So we take, um, let's say we provide the loan of 70,000 euros and we are covered by the uh, asset pledged, right? So that's how people tend to think about us, but that's not really the case. First of all, what we do, we score the farm itself. We look at their finances. We, we look at what's the viability, you know, what's, what's the revenue? Is it growing or, or it's not? What's the profitability? What's the asset to loan ratio? And all these factors are very important. And that's how we score the client. And asset as a pledge, it is important to uh, shorten period of recovery. If that happens, if the farmer stops paying, then we have an asset which we can use as, as, a, as a pledge. But first of all, we are lending to the already existing business. And that's why... It's uh, much uh, less riskier, I would say. For Understood. Him. So first, so just to summarize, first you score the the farm and the business, and on a, in a second time you, you check the collateral. But the collateral is only used in te- in case of default, in case of recovery. But first we are talking about the business and the, and and the farm itself and how it's growing. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's clear. It's clear now. Let's talk a bit about the statistics of the platform. When did when, when did, pla- did uh, this platform start? It's like how many years ago? So uh, we started at uh, June two thousand twenty. So uh, th- that's when we started. Uh, we experienced an extreme growth, and I believe we are one of the fastest growing platforms. But uh, <clears throat> it's not about the numbers. Uh, the founders here are already experienced, and we had previously established uh, companies in fintech uh, which were successfully sold so um we know what we're doing and we we are i think we're in the right track we will keep on uh, growing in numbers growing in geographies growing in team we're already a 30 people team in different locations so um we we already issued uh, close to i think 15 million euros and now we are issuing around 2 million euros each month and only 500 farmers from five different countries experienced our services and we're super proud of it. Yeah. And, 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 and as, as you mentioned earlier, and I was not aware about that, it's the, 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 the country you operate are not only Eastern Europe, but you, you mentioned already port, also Portugal and some other country in, in Western Europe. So you have this, uh, <clears throat> and you said, you said at the beginning also that your incentive is to develop in, in, in the whole Europe market. So, so there is no, uh, there is no limitation in terms of, in terms of country, right? Yes, that's the point. So we try to do uh, little by little, step by step, to engage with all the countries. And for sure, uh, I can you know send a message to your French community that uh, sooner or later we will be in France. Because the thing is that people think that you know it's Eastern European uh, who doesn't receive finance, but that's not correct. The same situation applies to everyone, and uh, France, of course, is not the exemption. Uh, it is a bit uh, hardcore information for, for your community, but uh, due to capital adequacy ratio, which is applied to the banking sector, um, for them, for the banks to issue a loan, which is smaller than 50,000 euros for uh, anywhere in Europe, is just a negative profitability. So wh- that's why the opportunity exists. You know, our small loans are not efficient for the banks, but very needed for the farmers. So uh, that's why we then engage and the same opportunity exists and same problem exists everywhere. France, Germany, the Netherlands. It's just that uh, for us, uh, we, we started in, from Eastern Europe, from Lithuania, that's our home country. And uh, we are developing the project 
and I believe in, in, in five years we'll be in, in major uh, European countries as well. Understood, understood. Tell me when you when you have your first project in in France. I think uh, I will be uh, be investing in in that one for sure. Um, uh, tell me a little bit about the the the, the statistic. I mean, um, in terms of in terms of delayed and in terms of default, have you encountered already some uh, some uh, some project that were not able to meet the 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 the, the interest or even uh, paid out the the capital at the end of the project? Did those things happen? And also in terms of delayed, how many projects you have in delayed? Can you can you uh, highlight some uh, information about that? Yeah, that's a very good question. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, you know we are in the lending business, so we all, we provide finance, and uh, if you provide finance, it's always uh, you, you are experiencing some late payments and some uh, some defaulted projects as well. So, uh, in our short history, I would say uh, we are very good uh, with the with the late payments, at least from 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 my perspective, how how I. Um, how I kind of projected these. So what we expect is that constantly around 20% of the farmers will be late on their payments. It's not because that, you know, they, they are somehow different from any other uh, business. People are tend to late either on their monthly bills or, or, uh, or on their loans, right? So that's a very typical cohort. And um, we expect that uh, close to 4% of the farmers will default on their projects. So that's why the interest rates are a bit higher at the moment. But so far, it, it doesn't happen. We 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 have uh, much less being late, and we have much less being defaulted. Uh, we had some projects which which, uh, which were defaulted. I think it was in Lithuania and Latvia. So we we went through through the full recovery cycle. We were able to enforce the the uh, documents signed with the uh, with the farmers and. Um, able to sell the pledge and, and refund the investors. So we went through the full cycle uh, in, in two countries. We didn't do that yet in Portugal and Bulgaria and Poland. But uh, as I said, you know, it is a lending business and, uh, and you, will have, you will experience some defaults. And we are very open to say that to, to the investors that any type of instrument where you don't experience risk, most probably is a fraud. So, of course, um, of course. I mean, with with uh, like, like 10 to 15 percent interest, we expect, of course, uh, uh, those, those high interest to reward the risk. And and as you mentioned, you're transparent with the with the, with the risk. And this can happen. Default can happen. Already happen. And you were able at that time to enter to, to, uh, into the the process of recovery. And I think my uh, my viewers are quite interested in that this process of recovery because. All those projects, for most of them, from, from what I've seen, are pledged with collateral. And collateral can be lands, can be machinery, can be maybe uh, other, other things. I've seen some tractor and stuff like that. So uh, I can imagine that uh, when you enter in, into those process, I mean, it should take some, uh, some, some time. It's not like straightforward to sell a, a, a land. And then once, if I understand correctly, that once the, the, the collateral is sold, then you can refund the, uh, the investors. Uh, they can be refunded 100% or they, they can be refunded less depending on the amount of collateral that you have been ab about to sell. That's, that's how it works? Um, most, most, uh, what, what you said is actually true, but there's uh, additional things which I would need to ask, add. So even if we sell the uh, equipment which, uh, which was uh, pledged, and we refund the, the investors and let's say it's only 90% covered the principal, right? So, so investors invested 100 euros, but from selling the pledge, we received only 90 uh, euros, right? So what happens then? We are still able to uh, talk with the farmer because he still uh, has a loan with us. He still is in, in, in debit situation and uh, we, we have full, um, full power to enforce you know freezing the, the other assets and the farm itself so as i said before first of all we finance the farm and only then the equipment but anyways you are right yeah so um thanks for that i've seen that you have already even if you have a, a young uh, a platform you already have a secondary market secondary market correct me if i'm wrong but this is the this this is the ability for the investor to sell what uh, to 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 sell the loan even if the loan has not uh, is not expired yet for example i say i buy a loan like 3 months ago and for whatever reason maybe because i want to reinvest maybe maybe because i want to have my cash back for whatever reason 
I can sell it on the platform and I can choose the price I'm selling to. I, I, is that correct? Absolutely. Secondary market is created for uh, liquidity events um, for investors. So it's there, it's operating and people are using it, uh, I would say, uh, rather actively. So um, if you really need the, you know, the, the, um, your cash back at some moment of time, you, if, if you would sell it with a discount, at least at the current uh, environment, it's very easy to do and uh, there are investors ready to buy because uh, if you see as mark is showing on on on, on its desktop uh, all of the loans are now being sold with a bonus so uh, means that if you you know put any discount it's always liquid so bonus mean, means it's it's sell, it's, um, it's for sale at a higher rate than it was uh, initially issued at the beginning that's what it means yes yeah Okay, that's good. And we can see also, I, I noticed also that in the delayed payment of interest, some of them are in delayed, like for example, this one, 83 days. And most of them, there is no, no delay, but some of them, there is a, a still a bit of delay. This is not something we should worry about because it's just like interest delay. And it's quite, as you mentioned earlier, it's common for the, 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 the borrower, the farmer to, <laughs> to, uh, to, uh, to pay the interest a bit in delay or, um, or is it uh, something unusual? I don't know, you know, it's uh, it's people trading. So, uh, but if I were investors, I, I would never buy with a, uh, you know, a loan with a premium, which is already late. So being late already indicates that there might be some problems, right? So uh, I don't know, maybe just the smart guys willing to sell and their late loans with a premium. And I wouldn't advise to buy that. So okay, but that's uh, an open market. So, so we don't really control it. I understand. So do you... We're do you talking mean, about the delays, uh, if I can interrupt a bit. Uh, sure, we sure. always have to remember that farming is a very seasonal business. And some farmers just struggle to receive their payments for, let's say, the grain sold and, and all these kind of situations that are uh, dependent on the seasonality and on their payments that they receive once or twice or three times a year. So if, if there is a delay for a farmer to get the payment for the work done, uh, the farmer will be late uh, to, to pay the interest for the platform, for the investors. But it does not necessarily mean that there's some kind of a massive problem that, yeah. that the farmer is going to default. So I think in, in terms of, of this question, there's a little bit more flexibility in farming than let's say real estate where uh, it's, it's more of a business as we understand it in, in big cities. Understood. And uh, do you, you as a platform, do you follow up on the project? And in, ca in case there are such, uh, such delay, do you provide some information, some news, some updates to say, okay, there is a delay, but this is because of uh, seasonal harvest that could not uh, uh, be matched or whatever reason? Do, do you provide such information to investors? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I will try to send emails to all the investors who invested in the project to inform them and update them what's the situation there. That's, that's, uh, that, that, that's great. Okay, guys, I've seen uh, also on your platform, you have some, uh, some, uh, some rating, some score rating. You already mentioned that you, you, you select some project and I'm sure you reject also other projects. So uh, I've seen some letter A, B, C and, and th this kind of letter. Can you give a little bit of information about this, uh, this scale of, uh, of uh, risk uh, scoring? Yeah, just to put it simple, from the investor's perspective, you know, the 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 more um, A is the best rating and C is the worst. So uh, that's so that's very simple. And yeah. yes, from, that's, yeah, okay. uh, we have A, A plus, B, B plus, C, C plus, but, okay. you know, A is uh, perfect. C might have some uh, late um, delinquency to be late, right? So uh, that's that's how we judge it. It's not, it doesn't speak about uh, probability of going default. It speaks more about uh, what's the probability of being late. So that's what the investor should have in mind while while taking uh, in mind, you know, where, where to invest. <clears throat> so we had this rating system. It's uh, created in-house. Uh, uh, we are the ones who know what's behind, the, behind the, these uh, ratings. But 
what investors should, uh, should, should uh, kind of understand that first of all, it speaks more about the finance of the company, of the farm itself. As I said, uh, you know, what's, what's the asset to loan ratio? What's the revenue? Is it growing or not? What's the profitability? How many years in business? And all many, many, many factors around the farm. And uh, collateral itself is only 10% of the weight in, in, the, in the risk. So uh, that's how the rating is structured. And that's what the investor should know about it. So as you said, yeah, there is a rating D, meaning that there's a lot of farms who are not receiving f- uh, finance. Uh, we are not just uh, you know, putting them on, on the platform. So we, we, we are in the uh, actively um, kind of or- organizing this job. So the ones who are in platform, we believe that th- these are the ones um, worthy to get investment. Okay. Um, as an investor, I have to select. I'm on your platform. There are already like three or four uh, projects available. I mean, how to? How would you advise like an investor to to start um, anal- uh, start analyzing the project and decide? Okay, I will invest on that one and not that one. Of course, they will check the ba- the, the, the 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 business. They will understand the description. They will look at the loan to value. Uh, they will look at the, the all the information you provide. What uh, I mean, it's uh, because it's new for 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 us. We know how to analyze a real estate project. We are very familiar with balance sheet and the income statement and everything. Thing. But uh, in, in how would you uh, advise us to 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 start uh, uh, deciding? Okay, I will invest more in that one and or in that one or in that one. How would you uh, uh, give us a bit of um, how how to become more professional investors in the agricultural market? Yeah, actually, it's hard to say, right? So, uh, and people uh, tend to choose different strategies. One go for more risky project to get more interest rate. Others goes for a. Um, uh, less risky projects, uh, and it's very, very uh, depending on a pers- person behind, you know. So I, I'm not really into into um, uh, advising, right, uh, on their investment decisions. But what I would do uh, is, you know, try to learn uh, as much as possible about the finance of the company. Uh, see for yourself if, if you think that this business is viable. Um, you can check the collateral. Is it, you know, uh, liquid? Um, what what uh, kind of uh, how fast you could possibly sell it, but it's too hard job to to do, I would say. And um, there is a need to um, trust in our job and uh, try to believe that our rating system works on, in, on your <clears throat> let's say f- for you best. And but I what I would. Uh, advise or suggest or ask our investors, don't forget that these are businesses who create uh, enormous impact for all of us, right? So they produce food and what they as well do, they they really impact uh, the um, global climate change. So the more efficient the business, the less fuel they use, uh, the less human power they use, the, the more carbon emission they, they sustain in, in, in their farms. Uh, the better it is for us. So never forget that we are here doing the impact investing and helping farmers to become more efficient. So that's the most important thing. And that's what we really have to take in mind while working with the farming business. Yeah, there's no, they're not only the, 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 the financial part and the high yield, but also the ethical part of uh, the impact by doing, by financing those, uh, those projects. That's clear. I, I understand. What are the um, la, la, last two questions? What are, what are the future development of the, of the, for example, like the 2000, 2022 roadmap for heavy finance? What, what do you have a, a plan for this year and maybe the, the, the years after in terms of uh, uh, improvement, in terms of countries that you will uh, uh, develop your company? So first of all, we, we are willing to uh, improve uh, user experience from the investor's perspective, meaning we, we are about to uh, add uh, additional payment providers on our uh, system so people can access it with the, with the different payment providers and invest in different ways. Uh, that's one, and that's a major task for us. Then uh, we are to um, create a large internal IT a team which would, you know, uh, make uh, development of the tech part of our business uh, much faster. So, so that's what we do. And in terms of countries, I think this year we will stay with where we are and uh, go deeper because Poland is a such a large market, and there is a lot of uh, need of 
uh, finance for small farmers. So that's where we will deliver most of the traffic, I suppose. And only next year, I think we will go for uh, for uh, other countries. But um, we uh, we are here to stay. We will uh, increase uh, the team. We will increase the products available on the on the markets. And as I said, we, we as a company. We are uh, going to make a step towards more sustainable um, economy and uh, more sustainable ways of doing farming. And we will introduce the products which um, pushes farmers to, to, to do the farming in a more sustainable way for all the, uh, for all the, all the people. So, so that's our plans for this year. That, that, that's great. So 2022, we can say no project in France, but maybe in 2023, we'll see the first project in, uh, in, in France, maybe. Shall we say that? We'll see. We'll see. Uh, Hard to tell. Okay. Do you have any, uh, do you have any, any message for the, all, all the followers? They are, most of them, they are French speaking, but anyway, I mean, they, they understand English. They are living in France. They are already investors. Do you have any message for them? Because that's the, this agricultural, I mean, I discovered it like just a few weeks ago, this agricultural crowdfunding, and I'm very uh, interested in that. I started already to invest. And uh, I will continue. That's my roadmap. I will continue for 2022. But you have any? If you have any message for them, feel free. It, it's all yours. I don't know. You know, guys, stay safe. Uh, let's forget this COVID this year and uh, and just um, focus on a daily life. And we invite you to our platform to you know go down to earth business, which is farming. Uh, let's help the farmers grow. Let's help them uh, to do their business, and at the same time, let's earn some money um, on on interest. And we, as a heavy finance platform, will do our best to serve you and um, serve you, serve farmers, and do our job. So, uh, welcome. If you ever have questions, contact either me or Darius, our large personnel. And um, thank you for for listening this this uh, podcast. Actually, I have one more question now. Uh, and that's, I promise, that the last one. Uh, do you visit the, the farmer yourself? Do you phys physically sometimes, I mean, go and, 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 and check by yourself the business? Or is it like uh, only distance and remotely, especially with the COVID, should not be that simple? So how, how does it work? No, I mean, you have to, you know, do some, some visits to understand what, what the real needs of the farmers are. So just to give an example, last week I visited, I think, five farmers uh, here in Lithuania. I did five farms in Bulgaria on December. Uh, that is, did uh, visit farms in Portugal. And then we, we are doing that. But that's, uh, I'm speaking from the co-founders co perspective. Our, our team members, you know, who, who are doing sales and operations, they are really meeting farmers on a, I would say, daily basis. Someone... From from the team sees the farmer at least each day, and that's that's uh, that's what I think. That's uh, that, that's great to hear. So that's it for that's all for that's all for me. Um, for the for the viewer, if you want to subscribe to the channel, just have a look. Not necessarily invest. Just have a look. You can subscribe for for with uh, the link in the in the description. And uh, I was really really happy, uh, Limonas and Darius, to have this interview today. To today. I hope we'll have uh, maybe another interview maybe next year or something like that and, and, uh, and check how, uh, how your company uh, develop and I hope it will develop uh, well. And uh, I wish you a very, very happy day. Thank you, Mark. Bye. Bye-bye.